Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the 3D Fueled Show. This is a podcast that talks all about the 3D printing industry, what it's like to run a small US manufacturer, 3D Fuel, we make 3D printer filaments, e-commerce, marketing, and to answer your questions about all of the above. So on this week's episode, first we're going to dive into the news. We have a couple stories. One is that the Snapmaker U1 Kickstarter campaign has wrapped up. The Wasp or a company called Wasp has launched the Cubo HDP with Regenera support for on-site plastic recycling. And then we'll dive into some 3D fuel happenings. Uh, we'll wrap up 3D Printopia. We were there just last weekend. Talk about what we experienced there at the show. Uh, we'll talk about our production capacity improvements. We'll talk about our wine quality improvements. And then we'll also talk about the Pro PCTG pricing survey that we sent out and that you still have a chance to, uh, you know, to take part in and kind of influence the, uh, the future path of 3D Fuel. Uh, at the very end, we'll talk about any questions that were left on the previous week's show. And from there, we'll go ahead and wrap up. So let's go ahead and dive into the news. Uh, first up, of course, is the Snapmaker U1 becoming the most funded 3D printer in Kickstarter history, which is really saying something. So this particular story comes to us via 3dprintingindustry.com. Um, Snapmaker, uh, it is a Chinese manufacturer of desktop digital fabrication tools that was founded in 2016. If you're not familiar with what the U1 is, um, it's been posted all over social media. It's been talked about in the 3D printing news industry for, for you know for quite a while. They were teasing this printer for quite some time. It is a uh, it is a tool changer uh, 3D printer, but not only that, it is an inexpensive tool changer 3D printer. We're talking sub one thousand dollars. A lot of other tool changer 3D printers that are of this type of capability. They're in, you know, they're in the three, four, five, six thousand dollar price range or higher. So why tool changers? Why would you want to go with a tool changer versus something like the Bamboo Lab AMS? Well, when you're going from one color to another color on something like the Bamboo Lab AMS, you have to purge out the material because it's all flowing through the same nozzle. So since it's flowing through the same nozzle, you have to purge out the previous color to make sure that when you start printing with the second color that you don't have any color contamination and that it has the full strength of that second color. To purge this out takes not only time because you have to be pushing the filament through, but it also adds quite a bit of waste. So this is why you will see people doing multicolor 3D printing sometimes and the amount of waste that's generated is more than the amount of material that's used on the 3D printed model itself. So. By using a, uh, you know, using a tool changer system, only one material goes through one nozzle. So there's still gonna be a little bit of priming that you have to do when you first start printing with that new tool head, but you don't have to take the time or have the material waste from purging out that previous color or previous material from the nozzle. This also will let you more easily 3D print with materials that aren't really compatible inside of the, uh, you know, inside of the same nozzle. A good example is using PLA as a support structure for something like PETG or PCTG. Because PETG and PCTG are more viscous than PLA, you're not able to print with PCTG or PETG after you have PLA go through the nozzle unless you purge out a ton of material. And this is because otherwise the um, when the higher viscosity material goes through the, um, basically the higher viscosity material when it comes in after the PLA, it basically will shove through the PLA and it ends up coating the PCTG or PETG in a thin layer of PLA, which ruins the layer to layer adhesion. But by having a multi-tool head system, now you don't have to worry about that cross-contamination on the inside of the nozzle of your 3D printer. Now let's talk about what they raised. Um, and we ended up backing this printer as well. We're going to, of course, develop material profiles for it, especially for our PCTG filament, and to also have that PLA breakaway support material so that you can have really nice, clean support structures when you're printing a PCTG model. They had, they've raised $20,161,265 from 20,206 backers worldwide when their campaign ended on September 30th. Um, it's an $850 printer when you backed it through Kickstarter. We were able to get it for even less than that, about I think $70 less because we paid $30 in order to get in on the early bird uh, Kickstarter campaign um, donation level or backing level this is i mean this is a this is a big deal um tool changers are effectively going to become the future of multi-color and multi-material 3d printing um 
just that time savings, the material savings alone, I mean, just those two things, they're going to pay for the printer themselves. Um, especially if you're 3d printing as a business, and you have a print farm. So let's see, going through the rest of this story. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. They've raised a ton of money. I think they're going to start shipping the printers in the next couple of months, maybe even getting some of them out by the holiday season. So very exciting. The next story up is that Wasp launches Cubo HDP with Regenera support for on-site plastic recycling. So Wasp, that's W-A-S-P, is an Italian manufacturer of large-scale 3D printing systems. They've launched the Cubo HDP. This is a pellet-based 3D printer for sustainable manufacturing. Uh, that's what they say, at least. The whole idea behind this is that you're going to be able to 3D print using shredded, uh, recycled plastic material. So if you're doing injection molding and you have a bunch of scrap, let's say your sprues, your runners, all that kind of stuff, these are the things that when you're injection molding, they get discarded, they usually get shredded and then get reused, um, sometimes even going right back into the molder. This is going to, you know, you're not going to need to have it in a pellet format. So basically the big thing here is that this printer is more robust in how it's able to take in the, you know, take in the materials. It doesn't need to be a nice uniform pellet size. It's able to take that shredded material. Now, is this going to be able to be used for things like shredded uh, multi-material 3D printer or multicolor 3D printer purge, like the bamboo poop we talked about before with the U1 Snapmaker? I'm not sure. Um, that seems a little bit less clear. Um... Yeah, I mean, it, it talks about how this is, uh, it's built on Wasp's high definition, pre high definition pellet, HDP, platform, which was first introduced with their printer, the 3MT HDP. The extruder has been redesigned for improved tolerance of irregular particle sizes, supporting a wider variety of shredded plastics. A powder recirculation system prevents stagnation, enabling the use of even microplastics. Um, through integration with the Regenera 3D system, users can produce their own feedstock by shredding, drying, and extruding plastic waste in-house. This makes it possible to close the loop on materials and cut costs by reusing production scraps or locally sourced recycled plastics. So this could be a very interesting um, use and application of, let's say you're working with a local plastics recycler, and in some cases they're just happy that someone wants to take that shredded plastic, take those shredded milk bottles off your hands, and uh, now maybe you could be 3D printing something like furniture out of this material. So it's really helping to eliminate the other processing steps that otherwise would need to be part of this kind of that whole circular um, economy or not economy, but circular um, ecosystem of plastics to recycling to then new 3D printed part. So those are the uh, the two pieces of news. Um, I wanted to cover more of the 3D uh, 3D fuel side of things this week. So we just returned from 3D Printopia, which was held in Bel Air, Maryland. This is the event that used to be called the East Coast Rep Rap Fest. Um, we've been attending it not every single year, but most years since uh, since 2019. I believe 2019 was the first year that we. It was either 2018 or 2019 was the first year that we attended, and then um, you know we've exhibited as well. I know that they had a break there because of COVID, and then I started exhibiting again uh, last fall when I got 3D Fuel moved back up to Fargo, North Dakota. So this has been a great show. It's one of the better organized um, end user or hobbyist shows out there. I've always been very happy with how this show has gone and how it's turned out. And this year was no exception. This was the last year that it's held in Bel Air, Maryland. Next year, it's going to be moving to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm personally looking forward to that because it's going to be a lot easier to travel to it. It's also going to be a lot easier to go, I mean, the travel side of it, for example. Bel Air, you have to rent a vehicle in order to get there. If you fly into the airport, closest airport is uh, BWI, so that's the, uh, the Baltimore airport. And then you're having to drive 45 minutes to an hour from the airport to there. Um, there's not a ton of hotel options around there, so you're also needing to have lodging further away. So really looking forward to it being in Philadelphia. Um, I'm trying to think of what some of my favorite things at the show were. Uh, it, it's always just good talking with people. We had a lot of customers that came up um, that have been using our product. They talked about how much they loved using PCTG, how much they loved the color selection. And for people that are new to PCTG, one of the biggest draws in were the toolbox colors. So we had 3D printed some uh, some toolbox uh, some toolboxes. We got these design files off of Maker World, printed them in the uh, you know in their appropriate colors that we have. So for example, uh, the toolbox teal, the toolbox green. 
and that really drew a lot of people in and got them asking really good questions about PCTG. One of the other things that we had it was a uh, kind of a, a squishing demo where you could be uh, grabbing a 3D printed vase mode part and squeezing it to see how flexible PCTG can be. There are a lot of people that really enjoyed seeing that and they have some really good ideas for applications. Um, so 3D Printopia was a great show. I also really like being able to talk with other filament manufacturers. I know I talked to the team at Protopasta and at Polar Filament and at New Makers and just talking about um, in some cases, commiserating about some of our shared challenges in running a uh, running a filament manufacturing company. We all kind of have our own niche. We all kind of have our own thing we focus on and, and try and specialize in. And so just some really good conversations happening there. Um, so moving into production, we have our production capacity is going to be growing. Our electrician is finally able to come in and get our new production lines hooked up. So that should be starting next week. And so we're excited to be able to, you know, up to this point, we've been 100% sold out on our production capacity. So one thing that customers have been asking over and over and over again has been like, hey, John, love your materials, love what you're doing, um, but what can you do about the price? And I guess before I dive into that part of things, um, we've also been improving things just with our existing production capacity. So we have, we've installed new winder hardware on our lines. And so we're able to get more perfect wines, basically perfect wines on every single spool. Um, we're really excited about that. We were able to get it occasionally before, but we didn't have as much control over where the filament was being placed on the spool. This is, I mean, this new winder is fantastic. We're also improving some things even with diameter consistency because this new winder is able to maintain a more even tension on the, uh, on the filament line. So better diameter consistency, even though we already were really good on the diameter consistency, this just smooths out some of those spikes that we would have every once in a while. So our scrap rate has improved. Um, and we have better wine quality, which not that our wines before really caused any print problems, but we get it. Like these look a lot better. There's a higher perceived value of what this filament is. And when we're competing against Chinese um, or you know low cost filament manufacturers and they have wines that are near perfect or perfect, We've got to be at least up to snuff, if not, uh, you know, if not better. So all of that feeds into pricing. So pro PCTG, we are going to be able to bring the price down. And I sent out a survey to everyone on our email list, and I posted this on our social channels, asking how do you want us to be implementing these price reductions, like these price improvements? Because we want to be able to pass along these uh, these savings to you guys. Not only are we adding capacity but we're also becoming more efficient and we've been able to get some of our costs down on some of our raw materials. Now that we're at a larger scale, we've been able to get better pricing uh, considerations from our vendors, which has been really good. And like I said, we wanna pass that along to you. We want 3D fuel materials to become not just the, the filament that you use for your final projects. We want to become more of your daily driver 3D printing material. Um, whether that's PCTG, whether that is our Tough Pro PLA Plus, or whether that's our standard PLA Plus. So our first step in this is PCTG. Um, so two ways that we're looking at reducing the price. One is to have a lower everyday price, which is going to be more consistent. It's going to be much more reliable. It's going to be more predictable. Or we keep our same retail price right now, but we have deeper sales. So for example, right now we have 25% off on our Pro PCTG filament. Um, we, uh, you know, we want to be, honestly, we're getting ahead of prime day. We want to make sure that we have, uh, you know, we've offered savings to you before you go spend your money with Amazon, even if it is for our products. And that's an example of a really deep price cut, but we wouldn't be able to share how often that's going to be happening. We wouldn't be able to tell you, Hey, this is when this sale is going to be happening. It would really be more dependent on, Hey, when do we, when have we got an overstock on our, uh, on our inventory, and then we would run a sale then. Um, so, I mean, I'm leaning more toward the uh, the other option of having just a lower consistent everyday price, but then that does mean that we'll be having less frequent and uh, and less 
sharp, less uh, dramatic sale prices that happen when we do have, uh, you know, when we do have sales because we want to make sure we're being consistent. So I'm going to have a link to that survey down in the uh, down in the video description. If you wouldn't mind answering that, I would really appreciate it. We want to make sure that we're listening to you and that we're providing you what you are looking for in our, in our 3D fuel filament. And as part of that survey, there's also just an open field where you can write anything that you want. So that's kind of the Hey, if you have any notes for us, if there's anything that you're looking for, if there's anything else that you'd like us to do. And then um, there's also a price target question. What is Pro PCTG worth to you? What What is the price point where you start using this more on a daily basis? I'm not saying that we're going to be able to always achieve that, but we want to at least know, hey, what is, what is this worth to you? Um, and we can try and figure out what we can do so that we're a good fit for your 3D printing needs. Please bear in mind, we, we need to make a profit. Uh, we do need to make sure that we can continue adding production capacity, that we can continue adding new product lines, and that we are, you know, to make sure that we're going to be here for the long haul. We don't want you to start using a material from us, and then two years down the road, we're not here anymore, and then you've got to try and source new vendors all over again. We don't want to be doing that. So that's what's going on in 3D Fuel. I hope to have more information to share on that next week. And I also hope to have a little bit more of an interesting backdrop. Um, I, I'm in the midst of moving, so this is kind of a, a temporary setup in terms of how this is laid out. Um, my sound quality is probably a little more echoey, but at least it's looking like I'm staying in focus a little bit better, so that should be good there. Um, we do have a question section, but there really was only one or two questions on last week's episode, so there's not going to be a ton to talk about here, but let's go ahead and pull those up anyway. So let's see, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay, so only three comments. Uh, <laughs> one of them was talking about, woot, focus nailed, love to see the improvements and covering lots of things. I would have to go track down articles to find out about. Thanks for correlating all of this. Looking forward to the continuous updates. Uh, thank you, Specialized with Spooner, or Specialized with Spooner. Uh, and then the only other comment on here is uh, from Ryan S600. What are your plans with future colors? Is your new production line going to help with that? Um, yes, we will be adding more colors. We're also going to be replacing some colors. For example, Pro PCTG, we're dropping bubblegum pink and we're dropping tangerine orange. They were causing processing issues when we were, when we were extruding it into filament. So we're, um, we are going to be looking for alternatives to those. So we will be, uh, we'll probably be adding another orange and we do need to find a good solution for pink. We've heard from a number of you that you really would like a pink PCTG. I'm not quite sure why, but we want to make sure that we're giving you the colors that you want and that you're looking for. So with all that, I want to thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the 3D Fueled Show. Uh, welcome again for another Filament Friday. I hope that if you have any questions, you leave them down below. And if you're interested in hearing more content like this, please subscribe. Please like this. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd share this with anyone else you think would be interested in it. Um, we're trying to grow this a little bit more so that we can have a bit more of a, you know, uh, a, a kind of a back and forth to be able to inform you on what we're doing, kind of our perspective on the industry, challenges that we're going through, um, things that we've succeeded in that we that we want to share with you. And if you have questions about the nitty gritty on what we do, we'd love to share as much as we can with that. We won't always be able to share all of it. So on behalf of me, John Schneider, thank you again for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.